How do we understand whether something is objectively true or not in ballet? Because ballet and art in general has this, there's this misunderstanding that ballet is subjective. I have an opinion, they have an opinion, they have an opinion, and all the opinions are equal. They are not. Right? Expertise is a real thing, competency is a real thing, and we're all finding that out right now with dealing with the pandemic, that we're all trying to find the, the, the best information we can with which to try and predict how things are going to go so we can plan our lives accordingly. That's the value of good information. There is nothing more valuable in this world than, than true information that you can base decisions on. So here's how to think about that with regards to ballet. So let's, let's talk about the mind-body thing. So placement, the placement method, this is a word I initiated and put into the, to the vocabulary of the ballet world. They don't yet understand what it is specifically, but it is not a general term. It's very specific to, to the method that I'm about to share with you all and the curriculum that comes from it and the art that ultimately is given life as a result of it. So here's the thing. Let's say you, you begin studying the fundamentals and, and let's say you study it for a month. One month. At the end of that month, you do it consistently and you ask me questions and we interact a little bit. You're going to feel the truth of this in your body. And this, is, and this is the thing about the body and the mind. So let's, let's look at this for a second. When you think about who you are, your intellect, your soul, your consciousness, it's all contained within your head. It, we are our minds. Our body is something more like a, um, a moist robot, you know, carrying around our minds, feeding blood and oxygen and nutrients to our minds. That's, that's really what we are. They're, they're not connected in the way that we tend to perceive them to be. If our mind and bodies were one, we wouldn't need diagnostic tools in medicine to tell us what's wrong with us. Wouldn't our mind just know? Like you can have a, a sharp pain in your side. Well, it can just be a simple cramp or it could be appendicitis and then you need surgery. So in order to find out, you need imaging. They need to image the inside of your body and poke around and see, okay, what's what? So the way, just simply here, the way that our body communicates with us is through pain and pleasure, fundamentally. You know, there's obviously a variety of ways in which you experience those things. And then your perception of those things, so it's, it's a whole other deal. I'm just going to stay on track here for a minute. So we, we experience pain and pleasure fundamentally from our bodies. And obviously pain is suffering. And if you suffer physically, you suffer mentally. Your mental health has suffered, your happiness, your, your state of mind, your, the way in which you interact with the world suffers and the people around you suffer. And suffering is worse than pleasure is good, right? Suffering is worse than pleasure is good, which means if I was to give you a proposition, I said, look, within ballet, okay? I can alleviate your suffering in ballet, all of the suffering associated with your experience. Physical, we, you begin with the physical because that's where you can begin, most simply. And solving the physical gets you the rest of the benefits. So if I can, I can either do that, I can alleviate your suffering, or I can provide you with some distractions, right, to sort of, so you can cope with the suffering. Which are you choosing? We are all choosing option A, alleviate the suffering. Because if you alleviate the suffering, you get genuine quality of life or pleasure or happiness, however you want to describe it, right? So nobody's going to choose what we all end up having to choose many times. Like we've all been there as adults particularly. And you know, I'm, my family on both sides, there's addiction and everything you can imagine. And so I'm, I'm well, versed in, in that. And, and that's what afflicts so many of us, you know, that we, we just end up coping with our suffering instead of understanding how to allevi alleviate it or finding the resources and the information that is true, objectively true, so that we can alleviate it ourselves, which is ultimately the only way to do it. 
right? I can teach you how to learn how to alleviate your own suffering because ultimately you have to do the work. You have to stand at the bar and take the information in and put it in your body and I guide you through this. So my real role here is to teach you how to learn, right? Not just give you blank facts and information, although that's part of it. I give you information and, and guide you through it. So suffering is worse than pleasure is good, and we need to understand that. And this is what afflicts the whole of the ballet world, right? It's just immense suffering at all levels. And it's, it is preventable to begin with. That's the best way to handle it. Prevent it right from the beginning. Let's get it right from the fundamentals. That alleviates a whole lot of extra work and misery and money and costs later. But for those who already are, are in the mix of it, so let's say teenagers are really, really at that place of, oh no, you know, teens and early 20s, we have to get to work. And this is where I come in because, so for example, the amount of expertise required to sort out a person that is already suffering is tremendous. It's a tremendous amount of expertise and energy and time and cost involved with that. And it's very, it's very labor intensive. Preventing it doesn't require that level of expertise. So if I could teach a, a choir of a thousand people how to teach the fundamentals correctly, even people who have never taught ballet before, that's even easier than trying to convert people with already unfortunate ideas in their minds. This is going to prevent future uh, cases of this of all the different kinds of suffering that come from ballet and then leak out and interact with the rest of your life. So, and now for the profession, for the profession, uh, there's something I've been meaning to talk about and I don't want to talk about it right here, but it's something that I'm naming the battered ballerina syndrome and this, I'm not being funny at all. I'm, I'm very serious about this. We all know what battered wife syndrome is and this is a very similar thing to where at a certain point, it seems like, and, and it's not case closed, I, don't, I haven't had enough experiences at this, I don't know that people at a certain age with a certain amount of and type of suffering in ballet and the way that that is interacted with the rest of the world, I'm not sure that everyone is recoverable at a certain point. I'm not sure they're willing to do what is necessary to recover from it. So people are always recoverable. You can always recover. But for the person to understand and accept that fact that you can recover, unfortunately the recovery and where you need to find that information and that support is in a place that they just don't want to look, which is in this particular scenario, it's here. I think I did this podcast a while ago where I said, um, what you most need will be found where, where you least want to look. This is what's going on, in my opinion, in the institutions right now. They're starting to realize that, they, that I'm a force that they're going to have to deal with. And it's, not, you know, it's, it's hard for them, and I understand that. And I empathize with them, I do. But I, I only have so much time and energy in my life, and I have to put it to best use where I can. And to me, that is, that is children and teens and adults. The professionals, uh, you know, I, they're going to have to decide and come to me if they want support. I, I, I can't, I, I, I've, I've already done it a couple times and it's, it's just, uh, it's a very difficult thing to talk about even. So anyway, that's not the point of this podcast. But the point is, is, is that, that um, this is my thinking going forward and why I'm developing these programs and how I would like those of you who are open to thinking about ballet differently to think about it that way. There is an objective truth here and I think this podcast is about just touching on how do you understand that you're doing something true and correct or not and your body will tell you. Your, with regards to ballet, your body will tell you. Now I'll tell you, ballet is a, is a brilliant done correctly is a brilliant exercise in self-discovery. You will understand your body in a way that you never really can with any other physical discipline. I mean, 
there are, you definitely will learn a lot about yourself doing anything with your body, interacting with your environment. You're, you're surely going to learn a lot. But ballet, because ballet is, requires a redesign of our bodies, beginning with the hips, and because it is not comfortable to us anatomically, it's not, I was going to say not natural as in nature, but, if you, but really human beings are of nature and we create a ballet, so ballet is nature also. But it's not comfortable anatomically, let's put it that way. <clears throat> so therefore, you're able to clear, at a certain point, when you feel that truth in your body, you're able to contrast it with how your body feels in every other aspect of your life, right? And for those who have training, previous training, you can really contrast the difference between what this feels like and what that has felt like. So that's something to give you some guidance as to are you going in the right direction or not and why you want to immediately switch directions. No matter where you are in the world, what institution you're interacting with, the fundamentals are not there. And just to cite an example with Maria Horova, you see, I did that podcast, you know, she sent me this really, what, an email that, it, it's just a tantrum really, an adult temper tantrum, and then, you know, blocked, blocked us on uh, Instagram, and then made, it, made an instructional video a day later, taking the corrections that I gave. This is the ballet world, do you understand? Th this is what's going on, this is how they react to this truth that I'm sharing. It's an understandable reaction, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a disappointing one for my, because she's only 19 or whatever, she's 19 or 20 anyway, and you, you see how rigid their thinking is already. And uh, you know, it, it's a real, it's, it's, it's gonna be a real challenge. So anyway, that's what's in front of us. And uh, yeah, tell me what you think.